what's up everyone happy new year uh, I know it's been a little while since I've posted and I apologize for that I've been really busy but uh, today I decided that I was gonna put together um, a little bit different of a video for you guys and uh, today we're gonna talk about how to identify fossils I always get asked how do you know it's from this shark or that shark or this animal or that animal and honestly it just takes a lot of research and um, there are a lot of different resources out there that can help you make the identifications and today I'm going to go over some of the resources that I use to help me in identifying my fossil finds. So uh, hopefully this video will help you uh, get the basic knowledge of where to look and what to look for in these uh, different types of resources so that you can start identifying your own fossils as well. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. So one of the first resources that I turn to when it comes to fossil identification is good old books. Um, there are a lot of different books out there that have different information, may focus on different types of fossils or different regions. So you want to look for books that are you know, specific to whatever the area is that you're hunting. I typically hunt in Florida, sometimes I hunt in the Carolinas, so I usually try to focus on books from those areas. So for example, I have a book here about fossil hunting in the Carolinas. So this is going to have information about the kinds of shark teeth that you'll probably find if you're hunting on the coasts of the Carolinas. Um, so I will definitely have links in the description below on all the different books and resources that I talk about today. Um, I'm not affiliated with anything. Um, this isn't really a review either. I'm just trying to help uh, you guys learn about the different resources that may be available out there for you to be able to start learning about fossil identification so that you can identify your own fossils. I think in my opinion one of the best resources that you can use is actually joining a fossil club in your community. Um, you're going to have a wealth of knowledge uh, with all the different community members and experts that are in those clubs and that's one of the best ways to be able to take your fossil somewhere and say what is this. Uh, some of these clubs also have their own Facebook pages or forums where you can also ask questions as well. So that is a really great way to um, learn and ask and start identifying your fossils. Um, always be mindful of what the laws and regulations are for your state when it comes to fossil hunting. Some states are more strict than others. In Florida, there is a fossil permit that you need to get. It's $5. And they just ask that you report the fossils that you find, other than shark teeth and shells, um, at the end of your permit uh, year. And uh, if you find something of you know, great significant value to the scientific community, they will probably ask you about it and want to see it. Um, but for the most part, you know, they're not out to get your fossils. Shark tooth identification can be a little annoying sometimes because some shark teeth species have teeth that are just so similar to each other that it's really hard to tell them apart. A good example of this are the requiem sharks or gray whaler sharks. This includes bull sharks and duskies. Um, their teeth are just so similar that it can be really hard to tell which one is which. And sometimes your only way of telling might be whether or not that shark was present in the time period that your fossils are coming from or in the location that you're fossil hunting. So in the book, you know, you can see how similar these shark teeth are to each other and why it can be so difficult to tell them apart. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at some examples. So I just wanted to show you guys a, a page from this book real quick that kind of gives you an idea of the upper and the lower teeth. You're going to have different sized teeth and depending on the species, they may even have completely different looking upper teeth than lower teeth, like the bull shark. The bull shark has really wide serrated upper teeth and then their lower teeth are, you know, narrow and not serrated and it came from the same shark. Um, and then also the position of the tooth is going to change the way it looks a little bit. So these are all factors that can play a big part in fossil identification because a 
a lateral upper tooth from one shark might look like the lower anterior tooth of another. So I just wanted you guys to quickly understand that that's going to be a big factor when it comes to fossil identification for shark teeth. One of the reasons why this is my go-to uh, book is because it has a lot of different species in there, but it also gives you a lot of examples for reference. So it actually tries to show you what the shark teeth in the different parts of the jaw look like for that particular species. So for example, this is the extinct giant mako. So I can take my shark tooth and kind of look at the picture and I can see that this is probably an upper tooth and it's probably a little bit more on the lateral side but close to the anterior. So anterior teeth are usually going to be more up and down while the lateral teeth typically have a little bit of a curve to them and depending on if they're on the left side or the right side they're going to curve left or they're going to curve right. Another thing I forgot to mention is this is actually the front of the tooth and this is actually the back of the tooth. A lot of people think that this is the front but really it sits in the jaw like this. So when the shark is coming to eat you, you're going to see this side first, not this side. And then you can see that the lower, I don't think I actually have an example of a lower um, mako. I think this one would be more similar to this, which is closer to the posterior or maybe another lateral tooth. Um, I probably have a few of the lower teeth in another box, but not on hand with me right now. So these are both upper teeth, and they're both from the extinct giant mako, Isurus hastalis. So this is a great white shark tooth. It is a small uh, lower jaw great white shark tooth. You can clearly see the serrations on it. It has its root and it has no dental band, no burlet. Okay, here's another example of a great white shark tooth. This one's root has deteriorated, so there is no root, but it would have been here. Um, no dental band has serrations. You can see that great white shark teeth are just very triangular. And then this one is also a great white shark tooth. But the difference on this one is that it is extremely worn down. There's no root, and it's so worn down that you can barely see that there are serrations on this tooth. And why is that important? Because here's a mako shark tooth. They're extremely similar. They don't have burlet. Their roots are very similar shaped. The teeth are very similar shaped. This clearly does not have serrations. It is sharp as a knife and there is no serration to be seen on it at all. And that's how I know that this is an extinct mako shark tooth. While this one, on closer inspection, you can see that there are serrations along the edge. And while this one doesn't have its root, the shape is very similar, but I just know that this is a great white shark tooth. This is also why scientists now think that the great white ancestor is actually the extinct giant mako and not the megalodon. And so that's why you'll start seeing that the scientific name for the great white shark and the megalodon are going to be different now. Here's another example of a mako shark tooth. So again, no serration. Looks like a great white shark tooth. The only difference is that serration. So great white, mako. So, I know I didn't go into a lot of detail on every single fossil, 
or every single type of shark tooth. But I hope that this opens up your ability to go out and identify your own fossils. So just looking at the cover of this book, I can tell you from my experience and after learning how to identify shark teeth so much, that this is a great white shark tooth. This is a bull shark tooth. This is a tiger shark tooth. So as you do this more and more, you're going to get more used to seeing these shark teeth and just knowing what they are at a glance. So that's just kind of an introduction and some very basic examples of some of the things to look for when you're comparing your shark teeth and um, comparing them to pictures. Not every book is going to have pictures of every part of the shark jaw. You know, they're not going to always have the anterior, the lateral, the posterior, the upper, the lower. So those are things that you're going to have to compare and contrast with multiple resources. So that's why it's important to look online, look at books, and compare your shark teeth to multiple references. All right, well, I hope that was helpful for you guys. I know I didn't go into detail about every single type of shark tooth or species. I just wanted to kind of give you some basic examples to kind of lay a foundation. Um, it's definitely going to take a lot of research and, and looking around and comparing to different resources, um, but at least you may now have kind of a starting point. And uh, I hope that this video is helpful for you guys. If I had to recommend one book for those of you that are really interested in mostly just the shark teeth, then my recommendation would be this book right here. It definitely has an extensive uh, list of different kinds of shark teeth, and um, it really has a lot of other good information in here as well um, to get you started. So this would be my recommendation if you could only get one book. And definitely look around to see if there's any books that are specific to your locality. Um, sometimes they will include other fossils in there that you might find alongside with the shark teeth. And so maybe they'll have puffer fish mouth plates or the stingrays or maybe certain mammals that you might find in the same area, which can be helpful. And as always, I definitely recommend uh, reaching out to local communities, um, fossil clubs, museums, and things of that nature if you're really, really stumped on something that you found and you just can't figure it out. All right, guys, with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you learned something. Um, if you have any questions or anything like that, leave a comment down below and I'll try to answer it the best I can. And if there's anything that you feel like I missed in this video or that could have been done better, let me know. I had no script. I'm literally just talking to the camera and uh, shooting from the hip here. So definitely let me know what you would have liked to see more of. And in the future, maybe I can do some more of these kind of educational type videos to help uh, those of you that want to get into fossil hunting. So with that said, Happy New Year, take care, and have a great day. See you on the next adventure. Peace out. So you still kind of need to know a little bit about what you're talking about. You know, we're going to have a, a guest appearance by our new family member. This is Ronan. We found him on the highway and he is now a new member of the family. So there you go.